All right, so before we do the test, there have been some questions on how I'm doing uh, my tests. Um, what I do is I record this game at 120 frames per second. This is COD Warzone. Uh, I do in tr I go to training mode because there's not much going on in the game, which is pretty much locked in at 120 frames per second. This is why I, sell, I went. I go to this mode. That way the frames doesn't drop. And this is on PS5. Well, of course it is on PS5, and it's been proven it's a hundred locked in 120 frames per second in the PS5. Uh, if you check out uh, Digital Foundry's tests on PS5s, it's clearly locked in 120 frames per second, especially when you're in training mode. There's really not much going on, so this is guaranteed 120 frames per second. And then I, I use a camera. It's actually a phone camera, but it's a S22, uh, and it takes 120 frames per second video. So basically, this is how we can actually test 120 frames per second input lag test by doing by matching both the video and the video game output to both you know 120 frames per second and there's been some concern that they say you have to capture this 120 frames per second no you don't you don't need 120 frames per second capture video like what I'm doing right now I'm capturing this at a 60 frames per second um, because there's it's not necessary to have 120 frames per second output on a capture video and I'm gonna prove that to you guys right now um, so there's 120 frames per second in this video uh, you can see right here it's 100 pretty much 120 frames all my videos are 120 frames and I'm gonna do that by skipping 120 120 times let's go ahead and start that See, it uh, took uh, 120 skips and uh, got to one second. So that proves that it's 120 frames per second video. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and do this first test. We're already in the blue lights. Um, let me do a full screen here. All right, so let's go ahead and with this test. Um, over here I have the Pi version. I'm using a Pi 3 in this test. I'm using the latest version right now which is 0 0.9.1. I have over here is B-Loader Pro. I just added this for performance comparisons. And then we have the VirtualBox version of PSRC. Same version 0 0.9.1 and then we got the USB direct connection to SIM here. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, go to the blue light. Alright, let's go back a little bit. So you can see right here, it's all aligned. So let's go ahead and uh, keep going. Alright, so as you can see right here, the Pi version already started moving. it's ahead of the Zim Direct connection and you may ask uh, how is this possible and I'll have an explanation to you guys in a bit here alright let's keep, let's keep going alright still ahead still yes it's still ahead of Zim Direct connection it's about two frames ahead alright let's keep going 
now is the right connection is starting to shoot. So Pi version is two frames ahead of Zim direct connection. And yes, it, it will puzzle you and and yeah. At first it was shocking to me how this is possible. But um I talked to the developer of PSRC and he gave me a great explanation about this. Um so pretty much what he told me, um, USB of the PS5 has a USB latency. Well, all USBs have latency. But the um, remote stream protocol um, seems like it transfers the information faster than USB. I don't I did not know this is like possible at all until I actually seen it happen. And yeah, it is definitely you know, uh mind blowing or it's a, definitely a breakthrough and because I've never thought that uh you know the the games we've been playing, I've been playing games on the PS5 and I didn't know uh I can even have a lower input lag than that, you know. Now it might be. Now this made me think that maybe the Zim adds input lag, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, test that in the next video, where I'm actually not gonna use a Zim. I'm actually just directly connect my mouse and keyboard to the PS5. But let's go ahead and. Uh, keep going on this um, so let's keep going all right so virtual box um, now started to move right here um, let's go back one more frame one more frame and keep let's keep forward one more frame so virtual box version is a little bit a little bit behind with zim direct connection it's like about see both the shells right here. Go back one more, more. Go back. They both start moving, but here in Zim Direct Transition, it's more. There's more movements. So uh, I'm pretty sure the virtual box is a little bit behind. Like maybe a half frame behind. But I don't think it's a full frame behind. Um, yeah, let's keep going. Because you both see the shells right here. This subtle shell right here. There's This one's more visible. See more smoke here. A little subtle smoke. Now, B Loader Pro hasn't even moved here. So, um, I don't know what happened with B Loader Pro here. Um, That's something I'll have to revisit about um, B Loader Pro and B Loader. I might have misaligned the blue lights in my previous video comparing B Loader Pro and B Loader because this seems like it's a you know has a lot of input lag. Um, now what I did before when I was testing B Loader Pro versus B Loader was I was aligning the blue lights in preview mode and that was a bad idea. Um, it's better to align the blue lights after you actually render the videos in all in one layer. Um, I didn't do that in the previous test between B Loader Pro and B Loader so I'll have to revisit that and see what's if it actually like the same input lag because um, right now this seems like it's a you're not even using B loader seems like the performance is lagging here to me uh, how many frames is behind let's see at least between Zim Direct Connection and B loader Pro okay so we'll start moving here so one two three four frames 
and then f and then started shooting so it's behind four frames against a z directly zim connected connection which is pretty slow uh yeah that's pretty bad not sure what happened on here um i i did use the first version of b loader pro so maybe they improved it in the latest version i have not used it in a little while now so i don't know if they improve the input lag in the latest version i'll have to update p loader pro and do another test um and see how that goes yeah but the real story right now is really the pi uh, which is like really you know first i was really shocked that it was even possible and i'm just gonna show you guys what rupture showed me here um, pretty much in-game development we create a loop to check if button change each millisecond PlayStation must be the same to detect input in network the input is thread when the frame arrived that means the remote stream protocol is prior than USB what he's saying here it's pretty much just streaming protocols streaming remote play it's faster than USB in latency and then I think that's what it's trying to say here um, but far so it can be quicker than remote daughter supposed to become users so then uh, yeah pretty much I think that's what he's trying to tell me that the USB of the PS5 is you know it's pretty much adds a lot of latency that we're not we don't know about um, and then I ask him about why does the virtual box version pretty much has the same input lag as sim direct while well, spy is much faster what he's told me here is because virtual box adds latency it's because it's what he told me here is not true hardware so if I believe if you're using Pi's or maybe Linux, which is like just a direct, you know, connection. You're not using a, a an external software to run to run PSRC. You're most likely probably gonna get the same input lag or in a very improved input lag like what I have, like what we have here. So um, let's go ahead and. Um, go to the next test here so for the next test um, I was very curious if the Pi or the Zim actually adds uh, input lag extra input lag because what I've seen with Pi it was two frames ahead of a direct connection with Zim so I wanted to connect the mouse and keyboard directly to the PS5 and see if it'll match the input, uh, the improvements of the input lag on the Pi version. So let's go ahead and go to the blue light. So yeah, you can clearly see it's aligned right here, all aligned. Let's go ahead and keep going. It's already moving right here. The direct connection to the PS5 hasn't moved yet. So it's already one frame ahead. Let's keep going. Two frames ahead on both. And then one more frame. Now Zim direct connection started moving here. The PlayStation direct to it hasn't even moved. So, to me, Zim actually even improves your USB latency. Because how is this even possible? Well, to me, what I feel like why Zim is working faster than my 
direct connection to PS5? It's probably because um because I'm because it's probably dependent on your fur you know, your your mouse and keyboard pretty much. Um since it's directly connected it's probably relying on the input lag of my keyboard. Whereas when you're connected to Zim it's it's bypassing the latency of your keyboard or and then it just pretty much goes through your sim and maybe there's the USB of sim has better input lag you know than my keyboard which is what is probably what ha what's happening here is what I'm guessing maybe if you use a different keyboard or a mouse you'll probably improve the input lag um, but that's all just a guess of mine I can't really explain technically but I, be I believe it's about what uh, hardware for referrals you're using because all all our controllers all everything that we use has input lag and there are times they're just some of our some of the controls we're using are actually has a better input lag that we're not aware of because everything is happening so fast you won't even notice it but honestly uh, this is the real story though I didn't think this would be possible right here where it will be like two frames ahead actually three frames ahead if you're gonna compare it to um, to a direct connection to PS5 and then two frames ahead of Zim direct connection. So yeah, seems like the streaming protocols is actually faster than in uh, like buttons, you know. Uh, yeah, that's news to me. Didn't think it was possible. Um, but yeah, when I was playing on Pi, it's like it's ultra responsive, like super responsive um, and it's it's really mind-blowing honestly like when you try playing on the Pi version that I'm using um, yeah it's you're gonna feel the a lot of difference like it's I highly recommend not using any if you can get a Pi um, this is the route that you should go to I believe the Linux, if you can run the Ubuntu, there's a Ubuntu version of PSRC. I haven't tested that yet. Um, and uh, I do want to test it because I feel like it might be the same performance as this. But that's soon to be determined. Um, yeah. Um, so far, yeah, this is really news to me and yeah I really recommend PSRC um, on Pi or Ubuntu if you can get a Pi it is a little hard to get but if you can get one this is the kind of performance you're gonna get and I don't see any th any reason why I'm gonna go back to not using Pi right now when I'm gonna in you know improve my input lag by two frames or what like 16 millisecond kind of like roughly yeah I mean this is I'm probably gonna be playing all my games on this version now like at first I was just gonna wait for a PS5 game that I'm actually gonna play competitively but now I feel like I'm gonna be playing even like the PS4 versions of competitive online games because of this so yeah that pretty much concludes this the test for the new Pi version or PSRC you guys have a great day